Welcome to the Painted in Color podcast. I'm your co-host, Mia Rajo, and I'm joined today by the entire team today, Esther Wu, Eric Wilkerson, and Lauren Brown. It's so great to see you all together. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know, it's, it's like a rare moment. I love this. <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah. Everyone's so busy, so it's just like just coordinating our schedules. I was just thinking if Brie were here, uh, You're like old you know, time. when we Call did the... The, um, the panel light box panel yeah i'd be able to say it's morphin time and, <laughs> oh that's true <laughs> mastodon that's but, you know, pterodactyl she, she missed out she missed out so. <laughs> some effects and stuff like it wouldn't be complete without that <laughs> that was awesome yeah she i did. love saying saber tooth tiger yeah it was right <laughs> Tyrannosaurus. Five <laughs> <laughs> ain't bad. <laughs> I had to come random. I had to come with the random. No, it's great to real us real early, Eric. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that kind of ties into our subject today because we're looking ten years ago, and I know the Power Rangers are more than ten years ago. But we're going into the right. past to compare our art and our lives back then to where we are now. And just kind of have a loose conversation about what's been different, where, how we've evolved, all that stuff. So, uh, Lauren, do you want to start? Do you want? Oh boy, I'm starting. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess let's do it. Um, so, ten years ago was 2011, and that was approximately actually the start of my career, or and or my last year of grad school. Is like, you know, I was coming in like super excited, just experiencing all the different majors at SCAD, like sequential art and animation and illustration. And I got to see a lot of talented artists do their thing in person. And it was really intimidating because I was um, more confident in my art skills when I was at uh, undergrad, which was Montclair State. But when I went to SCAD, it was like, you know, a bunch of rock stars converging in one place, doing their best work. And everybody was so passionate. And I was really passionate too. But my problem was, is I put myself in the wrong major because I didn't realize that illustration to SCAD meant more editorial publications, kind of children's book, rather than the things that I actually wanted to do, which was more along the lines of viz dev and fantasy illustration and um, character design, things like that. So I didn't really know what everything meant at the time because I didn't really get a comprehensive education about what the industry actually looked like. So I ended up being in this major for my first year and a lot of my art was super confused <laughs> because um, I think at the time, since I was so, like, like I just saw so much stuff around me and had so much stimuli that I felt uh, like I had to conform myself in a way that made my professors happy and, you know, kind of like work that would work in a magazine, but that's like, so completely not this kind of stuff that I really wanted to do. Um, kind of like more like the clever, like metaphorical type art where it's like, oh, like, you know, these visual like puns and things like that. I think those are awesome when people can do that, but that's just not, that's not me. I can pull off a visual pun, but it's just, I don't, I, that's not my normal thought process and my normal style doesn't really fit into that. It's much more, um, you know, illustrative, nouveau-esque, uh, presentary, almost like graphic design in a way. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of confusion around that time. Um, and so I'll share some of it. Uh, now, mind you, um, if you see some of my art, I was happiest when I was doing work in animation. Uh, Cause at the time I was also working on like a bunch of different people's student films and got to do character design there got to do background design and stuff like that. But when I was actually doing my illustration work that's when my stuff was like the most like muddled and um, you know not really clear what I wanted to do. So God, I don't want to share some of these because they're so bad. <laughs> some of them are so bad. Okay. Oh God. I don't know how I got to where I am now. All right. Anyway, I'm going to share my screen. So um, I still have like all of my old stuff on DeviantArt. I don't know if everybody see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yikes. Okay. So some of the stuff that you see was from undergrad. So interestingly enough, um, I was like much more myself when I was coming out of high school into undergrad. So this is like the old stuff. Uh, and clearly like the technical skills were starting to develop. They're not quite there. Um, I, I still remember my favorite piece was this guy, the water monster. I drew him in 2003 and finished him in 2000. 
five. Sorry. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was saying that's so not like your work. I love seeing this. <laughs> I know it's, it's crazy, but like, this was just, I just love doing creature design and all that stuff. And so, um, you know, I was just really excited about doing a bunch of stuff and all these, I drew all these figures. Like this is stuff that I don't even want to ever do now. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. Like dragon. Oh God. DeviantArt, please. Okay. There we go. Oh my God, close. Yeah. So, um, you know, like creature designs and a lot of different character designs and things that really made me happy. Um, but then as I started to come into the SCAD and DeviantArt is being a pain right now, give me one moment. Um, you kind of start to see the shift of like where I started getting into college. Um, oh, I still like this piece. This piece was a lot of fun. Yeah. I love, as, as you can see, I always love, love detailed line art for no reason. This was actually an ink that I did in a sketchbook back in when was this i like that you still have like you still had i mean strong line work you know yeah like you didn't like leave from that like even early on it wasn't like it was it was line it was still line and then like transitioning on from the, or not transitioning but going on from there like as a springboard yeah. Oh, just you wait. I mean, like it's <laughs> it gets lost along the way and then it comes back. So just <laughs> wait. But uh, this was back in 2005. This was when I was uh, first getting into college. Um, and yeah, like I still like this was very much like if I stayed on this track, like it would be it would have been fine. But I I started to get confused when I had to translate color. Uh, into my detailed line work and trying to figure out how to preserve my line quality. And this was actually one of the biggest things that I struggled with when I was going into SCAD was how to keep all of that like intact without losing all the work that I put into my line work. Um, but yeah, like this was stuff from undergrad, like here, like I was still very much doing things that I was excited about, like, you know, like crazy fashion design, like why? Like it's, you know, like my, my coloring wasn't quite there yet. And I didn't really, <laughs> it wasn't great, but I was, you could tell I was having a good time. Yeah. Um, but then let's go into, so yeah, stuff from college. I'd like to do a lot of um, nude ladies. So just, let's just skip past that. Um, so then when I went to SCAD, I was still a little bit myself, but then experimenting with media. So this mushroom lady here, um, this is a super weird piece and I still don't know why I made some of these decisions, but you know, whatever. Um, I had fun with watercolor. But then I started to kind of try to get more editorial. Don't look at these. Um, <laughs> We're supposed to. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I so don't want to look at some of these. They're just awful. Like this was for hotels.com. And like, really, who's ever going to read the word hotels in this? Like, what was I doing? <laughs> just so mad at myself. It's cool but, without but, knowing it's words, though. Like, it just looks like movement, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's where it got confused because I, I just wanted to illustrate. I didn't want to have to communicate the other things that went along with mm -hmm. the assignment that I had to do, which was, you know, this was for hotels.com. It was supposed to display different cultures. I just wanted to draw people dancing. So that's what I did <laughs> and kind of ignored half the prompt of this, prompt of this assignment. But, um, you know, like my professors were, you know, really helping me try to get back on track in terms of, um, you know, like the things that I needed to convey in my work. But I still think that they really didn't quite know what to do with me because I was, again, I was not really in the right major for what I actually wanted to do. So, you know, when I went to my career advisors and stuff, they were just like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I can help you. <laughs> like, I think one of them actually literally said that. So, um, so yeah, like this was another watercolor that um, I wasn't really happy with the final result. I still remember distinctly getting to skip like the thumbnail drawing that I did because I didn't want to do it traditionally. So I did it digitally and it didn't translate traditionally. So my lighting was all off, um, you know, but I was, I was really scared of a lot of stuff, but then I started doing things that made me happy again, like this piece. I still remember I loved this piece back in the day and um, yeah, getting back on track took a while. I actually still like this piece too, even though it's not really my style, but um, yeah, it, it was just like, it was a bunch of different things that I was experimenting with and I didn't quite know where I wanted to take it. But, um, you know, like once I started to get out of SCAD and back on track, I'm not going to go through this whole comic. Um, it was, it was like a struggle of getting back to where I needed to be. So let's go to 
do, do, do gallery. I'm already gallery. Okay. Words, words, words. Um, I think it was probably around. Let's look more. It was actually this piece behind me. The mushroom monster is when I started to really realize what I wanted to do again. Um, you know, as you can see, there's like a bunch of stuff here. A lot of this work was for conventions. This was like when I started my career in animation. Um, and I wanted to do columns as a way to like, you know, continue income and everything like that. But, um, but yeah, like the whimsy was starting to come back into my work and the color sense, I started to discover that like there were certain things that I really like to display. Um, and this piece was back in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And ever since, oh, 2013. And ever since then, um, you know, it started to, oh God, ignore that. <laughs> it's like my color sense started to actually come through and like the way I like to use colors really started to come through. So, um, you know, these pieces were kind of like where, ignore that, uh, kind of like where I'm starting to get now. So, um, so yeah, like this Valorcon poster was a pretty good example too of my gratuitous use of teal <laughs> um, as like almost my crutch, but kind of my signature as well. Um, so yeah, like, you know, in the midst of all the fan art, kind of like the more light, soft colors started to come into play. A lot of that movement and whimsy and a lot of the joy came back into my work. So um, it took a while to get back on track, but I got there in the end. So yeah, that's my old art and um, I'm really embarrassed now. I'm not gonna show these super old stuff because that's just awful. You <laughs> should be. It, huh? You shouldn't be embarrassed. Like it's awesome seeing the evolution, I think. And, and seeing that even like the older art that you're not proud of, like you still had some of the same themes and stuff. I find all that stuff super interesting. And I know our listeners will too, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, thank you. But yeah, that's like the summary of my work. But I think um, all throughout it, I had always had a, a super huge interest in movement and nature and kind of like, you know, creatures and anatomy. Um, you know, the moment I saw Art Nouveau, I was like, well, this is everything I ever wanted in the first place. So, um, you know, in my like early college, you can see a lot of that stuff. But it was a lot of experimentation to get my work where I really wanted it to be. And, um, you know, just kind of like the thing that I really wanted to express the most was the joy that I felt in my art. And I felt like I had lost that along the way. And I'm starting to, you know, I'm still on the journey of getting that back. Once I clear all my freelance off my plate, I can really explore all the things that I want to explore. But, um, you know, like my high school work, even though it's very inexperienced and very um, naive, it was still, I can, I, I still look at some of my old sketchbooks and I see a lot of how much fun I had with making all the things that I made. And that's where I really want to get back to. So, um, you know, these are like kind of what I, what I really like to see as my beginnings. Um, you know, these, these works still really make me happy. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a happy time in life in high school. So not so bad. <laughs> that's about that's it. A, that's where I came from, I guess. So in a nutshell. <laughs> well, I think we'll we'll kind of go around and see everybody's art if you guys are good with that, and then kind of circle back again for some more life things. Um, Esther, do you want to share? I want to see um, Esther. Yeah, sure. I, so, okay. So, what I'm going to share is um, I'll share <laughs> I'll share my undergrad portfolio submission Whoa. Um, Whoa. to college, which has never seen the light of the only SCAD admissions has ever seen them. Um, and this was the first time I was doing digital paint. So this was like, like 2011, 2010. That's when I started digitally painting. Um, and then I, I'll just have uh, my, how do I, where is Sherry? Oh God. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so I'll just have them up for a comparison. Basically like at the very, very, very beginning of, uh, you know, like, I'm going to be a digital illustrator or a digital painter. So like, oh, I think now I am. Maybe. <laughs> wow. I am. So I don't know if you can see my screen. <laughs> yes. So this is like a bunch of uh, digital art, uh, like, just studies I did and like this is like the beginnings of like my personal like I'm gonna be an illustrator what do I paint um I don't even yet yeah, oh it hurts me looking at this because I was like super proud of this because I thought I was like gonna I was gonna be I was gonna be some hot stuff 
Um, well, and, you are. You know, <laughs> you are. But, like, this was, like, in the very, very beginning. Like, I had just gotten a Wacom tablet. Um, and because I didn't have, like, funds, really, like, my family wasn't, um, like, not necessarily well off, but it's not like I could have gotten oil paints, you know, et cetera, as a kid. So instead of submitting a lot of traditional art, I actually did all like the studies, you know, to prove you understood the values to a certain extent. I did them all digitally. Um, and this is actually a portrait of a friend uh, that I did. And, you know, like I didn't know what else to paint um, around the house. And I knew like still lives were really popular. So I just did like, you know, flowers, shoes um <laughs> anime boy uh more flowers and then like still lives so that was like in the very very beginning um and then you know now i feel like i definitely have a, a much better understanding of you know like digital art so i that was this is roughly like 10 almost 10 years uh, in between, wow. where now looking at, you know, like my stuff, it's like a lot more cinematic. It's focusing on scenes. I still clearly, I'm not painting trees. But <laughs> <laughs> so, the tree the focal point. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, old habits die hard, I guess. Um, those, are, those are trees. Those are beautiful. Those, those are, yeah, they're trees. They're, they're, they're trees. Yeah. Just, just look over in there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my uh, like art from then and now. Um, definitely, definitely then I was not working. So <laughs> that's one life difference um, where I was like trying to get into art school. Um, and then now I actually do have like a career, which is like, like pretty, pretty, pretty good, I think <laughs> um, for the jump. But yeah, that's kind of it for for me. Like, I wish I had like actually done concepts then or like ideas. I feel like like Lauren, your art is like, look at all these original ideas I have and like illustrations. And I'm just like, why well, I like shoes. So I'll do <laughs> a digital study of a pair of boots that clearly don't exist now. <laughs> Original idea. My work was largely inspired by magical girls. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely had a Sailor Moon card capture Sakura affliction. Like it was it was not the most original stuff I was doing back in the day. <laughs> But I think we all see our, our art differently too. Like we're so critical about the stuff. Like even you looking at your trees, you're just like, oh, like this is not a tree. But I'm like, this is a dope interpretation of a tree. Like, I think that's awesome. <laughs> I love the way you treated that. And like the way you, the way you had done it, it works so well with the style that you have now too. But I like seeing that, you know, you'd always had a focus in realistic painting and then you translated it into, um, you know, painting scenes and making them really immersive. I think that's just like, super cool to see the evolution from your work. Um, I always super admire your environment. So like, you're just badass in terms of that. Thank <laughs> that's you, really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I was also like, even just like, uh, like, I guess even purposefully speaking, I never thought I, I thought I was gonna do figurative work. And then yeah. I, I'm sure like, I think it, it was got, it, it had to have been like a magic uh, artist or someone that I saw and I was like, hey, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I saw, you know, like, it, it had to have been, I don't know who it was, but it was definitely, I remember the um, realization of like, I can't paint a character. Who am I kidding? Like, as in like a beautiful rendered, you know, figure in like oils or whatever, like, you know, very gestural and brush, brush strokey. I was like, I don't have the patience for that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was definitely kind of like the, the turn in, in my, like, uh, like journey where I was like, oh, I think I want to do environments. That's awesome. That's, yeah, like, yeah. it's, oh, wait, go on, Mia. No, 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 I was just saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely something that I never thought I would do either, because my, my environment stuff isn't even in the DeviantArt portfolio, it's in my professional one. But um, I had no idea I'd be working as a background artist for like a, a pretty good length of my career. 
And it's so funny because it does not show up in my personal work at all, <laughs> but it's what I did professionally. And I was just like, oh, like it's still, it was still really fun to explore that part of my, my skills though. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said about doing environment art and infusing personality in a scene as well as a character. I think that's a really cool challenge. And I actually kind of want to do that a lot more, but I just haven't had the chance to do it. So I really admire people who have a dope, um, you know, like handle on, um, on presenting environments in that way. So good job. I like your stuff. <laughs> it's cool I also want to say real quick though, that I think it's cool that when you said, I can't do figures, I want to do environments and you focused on that, that now, I mean, you, you do kick ass figures, you know? So it's just like, just because Ooh. you sort of fixate on something for a while, doesn't mean that's forever, you know? Like you can gain yeah. the skills to do that other thing you thought 10 years ago or wherever it was five years ago, you couldn't do. So that's always yeah. something good to yeah, keep yeah. in mind. Especially when you're young, things just feel like it, it will, like, this is how it will be forever. These are just my skills and they're immutable, you know? And it's like, that's just not how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I'm uh, curious about Eric. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 2011, I was working as a, as a concept artist uh, for the Blue Man Group in New York City. Um, <clears throat> I, I had really no no experience as a concept artist and uh was this was kind of like my uh a learning on the job on the job training kind of thing where they just said okay well we need this we need that and i actually went on to websites like cg hub and well you know all these different forms that kind of taught myself uh, like how to do this job as far as the turnarounds and all the all the terminology and all the things i needed to know i kind of just panicked <laughs> and went home and said, yeah, I could do that. And then went home and like crammed and figured out how to do it and did the job. But um, I had kind of given up on trying to be a an illustrator because um, I wasn't finding the kind of work that I wanted to do. And I kept, I kept landing uh, staff or studio jobs mm -hmm call them staff jobs. <laughs> I kept landing studio jobs that I didn't really care for. Um, but when these when these guys came along and said, hey, we want you to design the costumes for a new show that we want to put together, uh, I was blown away. So anyway, it was a long year. Uh, my mom ended up passing away. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the company kind of gave me a month off, just, you know, like everything that was going on, they were just, you know, uh, well, there was other stuff going on at the time, but they, they just said, we've got a month where, you know, you could go do something else and just take your mind off of everything. And I decided I needed to go paint something. So I hadn't, I hadn't oil painted in a couple of years and it was driving me nuts. Um, and you know, doing everything digitally and, and having friends tell me, well, don't forget how to oil paint. Um, so I figured, okay, well, let me try to do, get back into doing something for myself, uh, something that no art director is ever gonna ask me to do and uh, have fun with it because I've got a month to kill. And I ended up, hopefully this works if I switch the image, uh, I ended up yeah. painting this nice whoa that's awesome so and this like which year eric what year did say you say again this? which year did you paint this this is 2011. wow this was yeah this was um june of 2011 i i painted this and so the i started out Ooh. the way i i learned in school like doing my value studies and in, in oil paint and like just knocking it out so that I knew exactly what the values would be and all that. Um, like this whole process, I, I started it out working out my comps digitally and like did the whole line drawing uh, digitally, but then worked out my values and my color sketches mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, so then I transferred the, I had this, I had this board cut, gessoed it. I mean, I had, I was putting in, I was in this room for like 12 hours a day, like every day, 
like going to get fast food and like scarfing it down super fast and then running back to the easel because I knew that I only had a month and then I was going to be back to drawing robots and all kinds of stuff for uh, yeah. for clients. So I just having a blast. And I so I took my digital line drawing that I done on my laptop. I had my little my little faux Cintiq before this before I could afford a Cintiq. I had my little laptop, my pressure sensitive laptop screen. I was drawing this all out on that and um, took it to the store and had them blow it up to the size that I wanted to paint it. And then I transferred it the old fashioned way. Um, Cause some people get, get all excited about gluing the copy, the photocopy to the paper. You know, that's a whole thing that, you know, sci-fi fantasy artists do now, but I took the time to just painstakingly like an idiot, <laughs> like get the carbon paper and like, retrace the entire thing because I kind of felt like I want this to last. So I put that um, that wash of, of, of umber on it just to knock out the white, um, still building it up in acrylics. And this process that I'm doing right now is something that I hadn't done in probably like three or four years. And to go that long without oil painting to me was like, going that long without seeing a loved one mm -hmm. like you it's it hurt right so when somebody tells you that you've got some time go do whatever you want i wasn't thinking i could go drive and go see family members i'll go see my grandma or something like i didn't give a damn i just wanted to be alone i just remember i know i don't want to bring down the conversation but i just remember this being like that cathartic thing i needed to just be alone like because i was mourning like painting and crying at the same time. It was a mess, but um, this was, you know, this was fun for me to just like background to foreground, just working out the, the aquatic colors and all the stuff that I wanted to have going on in the painting. Um, you see my little digital value sketch that I worked out with oh. my photo comp. So I kind of knew what I was gonna get you know, um, from the start, it was just at this point, it was about doing better than my digital comp, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then what's so satisfying, what's so fun now is when I like read certain blogs or like see how other artists work, I'm like, oh, I work the same way as this guy. Like, I <laughs> like, or, oh, this person does the same thing. Uh, made me not feel like a, like, like I was cheating or something to not be doing all of my studies in, in acrylics or oils or something like that. But, um, you know, I would just built it up and save the guy the, in the center for last. Um, but this was my little makeshift studio space. I was uh, living in an apartment with my mom and I had my little corner of the living room was my little studio space um but it wasn't big enough for me to actually do any oil painting so i rented out the maintenance room in an old folks home in a retirement home like oh. across the street from my apartment oh. and <laughs> so the place it, it was bubbling outside but this place they kept it like <laughs> 68 degrees it was air conditioning it was perfect um had my sound system going playing my soundtracks it was great and uh, no, some bitches ratted me out. <laughs> like I would crash. I had I put my little sofa in there, and I would sleep in there overnight, and then wake up and go back to painting. And uh, one of them old folks ratted me out. They're like there's yeah. uh, there's some guys sleeping in the maintenance room. I'm like you assholes. <laughs> Magic being in the maintenance room. <laughs> well, I think I I did it to myself. I messed myself up because like seven in the morning, I'm like, who, who in the hell's, because the maintenance room was right across the hall from the, from their exercise room. And somebody in there was like playing Leonard Skinner or what the hell, whatever the hell, like old folks listen to, but he was rocking out. And I'm like, you woke me up. I'm pissed. Right. I'm like, you, who's, who's waking up at seven o'clock in the morning and exercising? That's just stupid. So I got up, went across the hall, went into the exercise room and turned that shit down. Guys on the exercise bike, right? You know, 
like wow. eyeballing me. I'm like, why is this so loud? So of course I get told on and then they, they kicked me out. So, no. <laughs> but it was like, I had just finished the painting. Oh, <laughs> so I was like, all right, screw you guys. <laughs> but this was the dope space. I, I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, this was you know, a little close up of, of that. And uh, you know, the, painting so this was my little maquette that I had made like I was my my painting teacher back in college um Marvin Madelson he will always say you know like imagine how much better your your painting would look if you knew what you were looking at if you had reference for what you were painting so he you know kind of encouraged me to to sculpt stuff uh and then later on I found out oh James Gurney does the same thing I'm like oh my god so I would read his blog and like find out about his process and everything. It was just blowing my mind. I'm like, oh my God. So um, that summer, one of my painting teachers from college who also lived nearby was having a workshop, this little, uh, at his house. And uh, James Gurney was the guest of honor. And he, he said, Eric, you wanna bring your painting? You wanna bring your painting by to show Jim? And I'm kind of like, like full on jazz hands fanboy moment. Like, you know, like you get the sweaty palms and all that stuff, you get <laughs> all excited. Um, so I got to give a presentation, like talking about creating this piece uh, for James Gurney and all of his students for his workshop. Awesome. And uh, that was like the highlight of that was having like to show him my maquette. Great. And uh, it's still one of the like the, <laughs> out of my entire career, like one of those highlight moments where you just go, well, that's somebody I'm never going to meet. And like, oh, my God, there he is. Right. So cool. But um, then the piece ended up getting put onto the, the spine of uh, one of the spectrums. And it was kind of for me, one of those moments where I thought, OK, well, I could do this professionally. I just need to have the courage to can keep going. You know, don't give up. Don't just settle for whatever studio job, staff job that comes along that I'm not happy doing. Find something that I'm really passionate about. This was something I was really passionate about. Find clients that will allow me to do this on a consistent basis took a while. <laughs> it took a while, but um, that was kind of a, an awakening year for me because I was kind of just going along at the status quo kind of level where I just, you know, I was getting paid, but I didn't care mm -hmm. about the stuff that I was doing. And, uh, you know, having a chance to do this was really, really satisfying. And then the, the thing I was doing for Blue Man Group never came out. I had this whole thing, I had this whole thought in my head about I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be this concept artist for movies and stuff like that. And when, when, this, when this project comes out, I'll be able to name drop and say, I did, I worked on this and move out to LA and get an apartment by the beach. And I, I like, <laughs> I don't know how much that costs, but I'm going to get it, damn it. And, and you know, I was going to join the, uh, all these unions and stuff. And then I had researched it like step by step. Here's, here are the goals. Here's what's going to happen. And then they canceled everything. Mm -hmm. um, all of my designs were fabricated into real costumes that are sitting in crates in like some warehouse in Long Island or something right now. But, uh, and uh, I think... Cirque du Soleil bought Blue Man Group, so nobody's ever going to see anything that we did. Oh. <laughs> so I had to find some kind of silver lining for that whole experience. It was like, okay, I got to do a painting that I enjoyed. So that's where I was 10 years ago this month, actually. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So that's uh that's an awesome. Find story. what you love and do it. Yeah. And I love that that change of course is kind of like where you are now, like you are so established in your career in terms of everything you're doing, like hitting all those, you know, bucket list jobs that everybody in that field wants, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's amazing to think like a branching off point like that, like where could you have been if, if things had gone differently, but I like where you ended up and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do too. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have my wife or my kids, and, mm, right. you know, all that stuff. So it, mm. it, life, life, I don't know what the saying was something like life doesn't give you anything you can't handle or something like that. Mm. I don't know if that's the way, right way of looking at it, but uh, not that I couldn't have handled it. I, I think I could have handled a, a nice beachfront <laughs> apartment. <laughs> How much does that cost, Esther? A lot? Oh, it depends on which beach you want. <laughs> I guess that's true. I mean, Ooh. I mean, I just wanted to be somewhere in walking distance of, uh, I don't know, like Santa Monica or something, one of those beaches. Yeah, <laughs> cool. that's that's my story. It's an awesome journey too of perseverance and making the best of a bad situation as well. Because you, it was a moment where it sounds like you probably hit a wall where you're like, if I'm going to have this month off, then I'm going to do something that really makes me happy because you were you were working through your grief and through your grief you found yourself. And I think that's really poetic and really beautiful. Uh, that you were able to do that, even though I'm so sorry about, you know, that loss, but a lot of people would have just, you know, not wanted to do anything. And that would have also been totally valid. But the fact that you took that, that energy and made something so beautiful with it, that propelled you to, you know, to where you are now. Like, I think that's just, that's just fantastic. And that's one of the reasons why we do art in the first place, right? It's like, this is a way to express our emotions and what we're going through and who we are as people and like what we're actually feeling. And I feel like all that came across in that piece. It was just, you know, like it was a sci-fi piece of a, you know, a beautiful black man and, you know, in the spaceship with like an alien and a woman, but it, it was so quintessentially you that I think that's, you needed to make that. And you, and you spoke that and it resonated with so many people because of that, because it was just you. That's really special. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I find it really cool that like you pinpointed like ten years ago, like the the piece. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the yeah. art piece that you did that is you now. Like not. I feel like that's that's also super valid. Like like validating and like really empowering. Where you're just like, I know the exact piece that like you know kind of like either started the journey or like made me super proud and you know like when you you know look back because who the fuck remembers you know a decade of work <laughs> but like when you do look back you're like that was it yeah like, that's yeah like that was super... that, that was a heavy heavy year and uh to yeah so knowing that knowing like figuring out who you are what you want to do and, and uh, where you want to be in life, like all in the same month, all in the same year is, is a lot. And um, it's, I mean, to anybody that's, that, that's out there, that is uh, like, things aren't working out, you know, you've, it's just about timing and figuring out what, what it is you want to do and, and, uh, and making that happen. Like the, the, the last guest that we had on was talking about manifesting her reality, yeah. you know, writing down and, and putting it, putting it out there into the world. Like, this is what I have to have happen today or this month or this year. And, you know, that kind of speed manifesting, like you, you can't just sit by and just wait for things to happen. You've got to take the initiative and say, okay. All it takes is one painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one painting can change everything or a few, you know, but oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yep. Speaking of which, Mia, I want to see your one painting and oh. where you were in 2011. I don't have a one painting like that. My story is, is a bit different, I guess. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Uh, I think other people can see um, 
your work differently than you can. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay. Damn. I don't know if I can zoom in on this, but I put this together a couple of years ago. Whoops, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I did that. Whatever, we're gonna have to see it from this view, but I kind of put together my work from 20, 2007 all the way to 2019. So that must've been when I put this together. <laughs> But um, 2007 was when I graduated from college and was first doing gallery shows. So that's what my work looked like. Super acid colors, <laughs> yeah. um, very uh, weird imagery. Like I, I loved doing these weird heads like <laughs> that were in flowers or in trees and stuff. And funnily enough, that kind of is still in my work today because they're sort of like tree spirits or like, you know, the energy of nature in some weird way. I was trying to put a human face to that. It, even though it's creepy in these images, <laughs> I think oh, I succeeded real. with that in some others later. But, um, but yeah, I was really into fairy tales and stuff. So I, and this was my take on Cinderella, you know, like I just was really into fairy tales and fantasy and all the colors in the, in the palette, I guess. And a lot of surrealism and a lot of weird compositional elements and details in every corner. I think I told you guys that before. But yeah, 2009 through 2011, I, I, I don't know what it was that made my palette go like muted and stuff, but I just, I, I was looking at a lot of other people's art and maybe was noticing that my colors are just really bright and admiring other people that had a more, had more control with their saturation, you know? So I think I was just exper exper experimenting with that. Um, but yeah, some of the themes were pretty much the same. I, I was really drawn to like, female like main female figure like that is sort of larger than life in the image and there's almost like miniature worlds taking place all around her just like a, a person's in, inner universe pretty much and then yeah 2012 to 2013 that was these three were for my solo show that I did which was all like based on humans and trees was the theme about our sort of co-relationship that we have and then a Game of Thrones piece and then a couple group show pieces uh, yeah, I don't really know quite how else to talk about all this, but uh, from 2014 on, that's actually when I was, well, 20, this was actually when I was working on my Alice Project 2, so after the mm -hmm. show. So I was actually painting more dark skin characters because I was trying to figure out how to, like, do the rendering of the skin tones and the lighting and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, I think that this year, yeah, it was sort of like half, half group show pieces and half Alice pieces, and that's kind of how it was going on from that. So group show pieces and then Alice pieces. And yeah, that's uh, painting a lot less from 2014 on. And again, these aren't all the paintings I did those years. These are just selections of each, but from 2007 to 2011, it was like double the amount of paintings per year that I've been doing recently, which obviously is because of my serving job and stuff like that. But um, yeah. yeah, I guess life in terms of like life things, I suppose uh, 20, 14, this is where I started my first cashier job and was doing retail and stuff like that, retail and service industry stuff. And um, and this was kind of the, the time that I had the sort of like crisis of like, what am I doing <laughs> that we talked about in that episode. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's it in a nutshell. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious as to what your phase of life was when you were doing the super acid uh, colored um, Oh, it is reminiscent of an artist, and I'm so mad that I don't remember who it is. But um, yeah, like it's it reminds me of something. But I'm I just curious as to know like where were you in that part of life for each of these years as you were making these pieces? Yeah, so 2007, like I said, I graduated art school, and mm -hmm. these were my first like gallery paintings, like these three in particular. Um, I was living with my parents, you know, like I, my dad had said, you have a year to basically make a, a living off of this gallery stuff before you have to get a job. And so that's, I, I was like painting the entire year. And I, by the end of that year, I did get my two kind of back-to-back -back mini solos or whatever and sold every painting. So I kind of kept awesome. going from there. But yeah, it's funny because this is very childlike to me because I was in a very childlike state. I was literally an overgrown kid living with my parents, just painting and was very, very lucky that my dad gave me that little lifeline, you know? Because that's something I want to acknowledge. Not everybody has kind of like people have supportive parents, but they're also realistic and they're like, go and get a job. And I kind of wish I had gotten a job because I wouldn't have had to have these jobs now, like this late in life. But things happen for a reason or whatever it is that, you know, people believe about that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, it's just uh, 
I was also very, very isolated. Like my sister was pretty much my only friend. <laughs> so they're very internal, very navel gazy paintings. I don't know. I, I, I don't relate to those paintings at all anymore. I'm not that person at all in any way. Super shy, like super childish. <laughs> Um, like my dream back then was to live in a, in a house with a bunch of cats with my sister and just be two spinster girls, you know, or spinster women, you know, that, that was, that was me. <laughs> <back then. laughs> oh, it's, it's interesting though, that you felt isolated during that time period. And also that, that kind of childlike, very in your own head, it seems like, because all your figures are mostly just alone women, yeah. um, in their own world, kind of like a lot, like how you were. Mm -hmm. um you know you were you were siloed in a place where you were just painting and focusing on doing this one thing to you know make ends meet and even though it's like this very whimsical kind of fantasy world it comes across like i can see how that part relates to what you were actually making at that time yeah. interesting to me well look at the look at the artistic growth from 2007 to 2017 yeah like that's like your 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 control of your values your control of your color your color contrast your value contrast like the cinematic <clears throat> there's more the cinematic lighting effects that you have going on from 2014 to the the last piece which i own by the way i just want to let everybody know just in case she was looking for that on her, on your on her on her website it's on my wall so he, yeah. the original yes, yeah yeah because I had been admiring Mia's stuff for a while, and because I was, I was, I was seeing her Alice in Wonderland stuff. I was like, "Who is this? What's, what's, what's this going on?" So, what was it? Uh, was it? It wasn't Dragon Con. Was it Dragon Con or was it uh, one of those cons? What's the one out in Indiana? Uh, not Indiana. Gen Con. Gen Con. Gen Con. So I, I see her uh, her booth set up and everything. So I did. I was like, "I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask her a bunch of questions." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know who 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 this person is, and and so she's very nice, and um, but yeah, it was really beautiful work. I'm like, oh my god, I wish I could, like, you know, see this in person. Um, but it was very very blown away by her palette and 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 everything. But just to see all of this like on the on the screen like laid out like this, you it's almost by per decade you can see the jump. Yeah. I'm not that old, Eric. <laughs> per decade. I know, per not per decade, but you know what I mean. Like per year, you can see the jump. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I think that jump can also only be present by creating so much that like you have enough pieces to see that clear gradient of transition. Because I feel like um, you know, like when I when I looked at my own work, it was like just all over the place at first, but I wasn't, I wasn't as productive as I should have been. And uh, just seeing how you had a clear point of view, you were clearly making yourself as a part of a set for a show. And that really comes across really clearly in each of these um, set of, you know, these sets of years. Um, it's just, it's just wild to see how they each go together in their own ways, but it just grows in sophistication so much too. Like there's definitely people who make a career out of making really acid looking paintings, yeah. but where you ended up feels so much more you, um, you know, much more like it's whimsical, but it's also serene in a way. It's sophisticated and it's also very fantastical. And I, I just love where you ended up. It's so cool. Thanks. So cool to see that. And it's what, 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 what I, what I, from your Alice in Wonderland pieces, I just, you know, I don't know if, we, if you've thought about it this way, but it's just, it's so rare to see illustrations of dark skinned black folks well lit or in dramatic lighting in any kind of fantasy or sci fi art. So, like, or just in, in art in general, like, I think of as a handful of, of artists I know of, and like at the top of the list, I think of Kadir Nelson, mm -hmm. but. You know, outside of him and like Frank Morrison and a couple of children's book illustrators, there's not a lot of people out there that put this in the, in their portfolio, in their and in, in, then say, okay, well, this is what I'm going to use to get work, or this is what I want my my you know my voice to be. Um, so I thought that's that was just beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and just the way you handled it. 
too like the the, the flesh tones and everything it's just like spot on so thanks eric that means a tremendous amount coming from you and it's amazing to see more of it now though i mean on my instagram i follow so many people and i see more dark-skinned characters in artwork which is so exciting and it's just yeah. like i can't wait for all that art to go out there and just you know kickstarters and book covers and all the things because to me it's ridiculous mm -hmm. that it's taken this long for people to care you know and it's just like I just never understood it, honestly, but uh, that could be a whole podcast, honestly, on that, on that topic alone, but, oh, yeah. yeah. Let's stop on screen share there. Absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I also like how everyone's, like, like, art then versus now, like, the way, like, we've all grown is in different path like it, it's we've all improved i think <laughs> for sure so i think our past selves would be really proud um but it's also like where we've taken like our own art too you know where it's just like with me as it's, it's like every year for a different gallery show you just like you pull something new for that show each time like holy shit <laughs> i so for me it's like i know when i like revisit my old stuff i'm like i painted this I painted that already. Why did why did I paint this again like three years later? Um, <laughs> but you know, and and I think with like Eric stuff, which is like been just strong sci-fi, just oh yeah, sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there's no other kind of art, right? Like, I'd rather that's that's what I that's the only thing I want to do. That's amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh man, but. Yeah, it's just really interesting to see how, like, what we've learned throughout that process, too, yeah. and how we've grown from where we had come from initially, or got on track from just being confused as to what we wanted to do. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, you just see a lot of discovery and a lot of those early pieces of just, like, I don't know if this is working, but I'm just going to try it. And I think part of, like, why it's so embarrassing for me to look back at my old stuff is just because I, I'm, like what I had was it was there like I, I had it like I already figured it out and I'm just like I just veered off the path because I thought that what I was doing wasn't valid to be explored which was silly but because I wasn't seeing people do the things that I was doing I didn't think that I was doing the right thing yeah. and so I let myself kind of get lost along that way even though I'd had it all along like in back in high school I was just happy and knew what I wanted to do and so I just think it's really interesting um you know, that so many different ideas can throw you off from the things that you just, you would rather be doing. Like, and it's, and it's so easy once you do the things that you actually want to do. <laughs> like it, com it comes out so naturally because I'm just like, you know, like when I finally started like drawing that, like the mushroom lady piece, I was like, oh, 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 that's, this is what I meant to be doing. I get it now. I'm an idiot. <laughs> so it's just, it's a whole journey of learning, but it's, it's just cool to see that uh you know from everybody and like how we started and where we ended up and also the common threads of just like our sensibilities anyway in those pieces where we were lost like i just think it's super cool yeah i think you actually said something really important that i wanted to touch on which is uh you mentioned about like having your own vision but you don't you're discouraged because you don't see anyone else doing what you want to do and i think that i talked actually to a really good friend of mine recently about this and and she went through some depression recently about her work is very unique, you know, it is hers. And, and she was just feeling really down on her work all of a sudden. And I actually have been through that like ups and downs in my career too. And I think it's kind of a double-edged sword to do something, to either be any kind of a trailblazer in terms of how you do your career or to have a singular vision with your work that you don't see anywhere else. Because that's also, yeah. that's validating and empowering. But at the same time, it can be kind of confusing because there is a lot of the same art advice that's given to people and it's almost like here's the recipe for success and i think what we're trying to do with the show is show all these different perspectives that we have too and just to be like this is what we think but it's not necessarily the answer you know it's like it's it's kind of like choose your own adventure and i wish i yeah. had that earlier because yeah when you don't see someone else doing what you want to do you start questioning sometimes hey am i even doing the right thing or and especially if it's not working out in the current moment if you're not financially succeeding at it or there's a lot of, you know, struggle to get to this thing. You start doubting. You're like, am I, is this even worth pursuing? Is this smart even, you know? Am I just wasting my time, even if you love it? And so I think that it's just not talked about enough. 
but it is a double-edged sword. And if you're feeling that way, that that's normal and just push through. And just like, I honestly think like your compass should always be what you love. Obviously like do what you have to do to make life happen, you know, to survive life, but your compass should yeah. always be your heart, the art, because I think people can feel it. And we've talked about this many times before, but I just wanted to acknowledge that the struggle is like, is uh, normal basically. Struggle is real. Yeah. <laughs> struggle is definitely real. Like the way I always phrase it uh, for people, no matter like what career honestly they're in or what they want to do is I ask them, what is the thing that you do where when you do it, hours go by like nothing? Because that's always kind of where you want to focus your attention on because there's something there. It makes you happy enough where you just lose time because you just got, you just kind of tranced in it. It's kind of, if, if anybody has seen the movie Soul, it's, um, you know, when you go into that, that other place where you just get transported, it's exactly that um, of the thing that you get so excited about that you just love. And so many people veer themselves off of it because it feels too easy. I think we talked about this before too, but we feel like we have to struggle in order to be successful in what we do. And it's, you know, like obviously art is hard and this field is not easy and there's a lot to learn with it, but I think a lot of people, including myself, make it way harder than it ever needs to be <laughs> because we feel like we need to be a struggling, starving artist in order to get the things that we need to get done, finished, and um, in order to put any validity behind the things that we want to do. Because if it's too easy, we're just like, well, am I even pushing myself? Am I challenging myself? You can challenge yourself, but you still can do the things that you'd like to do. It's okay to do that. And it almost feels like a guilty pleasure, but there's nothing guilty about it because you're making beautiful art. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And that's something that I have to keep telling myself over and over again. So I hope that some it resonates with somebody because man, it's a lesson I need to keep learning. Because <laughs> it's a rough when you do things that you hate doing. It really is. Yeah. Like Eric, you know it too well. <laughs> yeah, it's take rough years one. off your life, hair off your head. <laughs> <laughs> Mess you up. There's a there's the the that Alan Watts video on YouTube where he uh, he asks what would you do if money were no object. That that video messed me up. I'll 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 post the link. I'll I'll send you the link. Yeah. Maybe you could like maybe add that in the in the, yeah. in the chat or in the in the comments or whatever. But uh, that really it really hit home because I mean at the time I was sitting in the studio. Uh, I had the studio job and, you know, it was like making me miserable, you know, it was getting paid well, but you're just like sitting there like, oh my God, like tear run down your face. Like you just like, you know, you want to be doing something completely different and not know how to get there because of all these different roadblocks or gatekeepers or whatever, you know, saying no, no, no. But uh, that one question, what would you do with your time if money were no object i asked my own students that like what, what what kind of art would you create what would you do mm -hmm. and if you know then go make that art would you even be doing art if or would you even things? be doing yeah. art would you would you just be like skydiving constantly <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like what would you do so it's it's a heavy question and sometimes people don't know the answer but if you know the answer get to work what would you do eric oh i'm i'm doing it i'm just like like making making sci-fi paintings with black folks in it yes like i'm i'm actively doing one right now while we're talking That's right. and uh it, it took 10 years to get there but it's like when i did the piece that i just showed there was no there was nobody nobody was asking for that nobody not not one publisher i did that and like mia what you were saying like with your friend that you get nervous about doing something you love because you don't know if it's the right path the right way to go when you could be doing samples for some kind of other thing you know i could have been putting together magic card samples that that month you know that year but i didn't because i was constantly getting rejected from that too <laughs> so it's like all right well, let me focus, refocus my energies and uh, sat there. You know, I hadn't heard any motivational speakers or anything like that. I just sat there and did something that I loved, regardless of the outcome. 
and said, well, whatever happens, happens. And sometimes you need to just take a month and just do something like that for yourself. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Anyway. Esther, what would you do if money were no object? I don't know. I, <laughs> I've always wanted to, like, for me, like, something that you don't see in my portfolio is that what I used to do is if I visited a place, I tried to fill out a sketchbook with just that place. So um, that would probably be it. Like, I wouldn't necessarily go van camping, um, but, you know, just if I could just pick any destination whenever I wanted and then stay there until I finished the sketchbook, that would probably be it. I only have two that I did. It's like, I visited Rome when I was a teenager and then Croatia a few years back. And, you know, as absolutely, that's art-ish, but very, very ego art. The like, look at my sketches of <laughs> the world. <laughs> I am no. an artiste. Like, like, right. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. I'm a gray oh, city oh. <laughs> cafe with like, um, you know, the cappuccino. <laughs> very, very tiny, the tiniest cup. Like, why is that cup so small? <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. That's a beautiful thing. Mia, what would you do? I mean, I would, I would write and illustrate books. Like, I want to do that for the rest of my life. I have a bunch of stories in my head now, and I know I'll have more of them the more life I live. And I just want to keep creating fantasy stories and stuff. But I think that I would stress less if money was not a problem, you know? I stress out yeah. so much about money. And uh, I think a lot of us do. And I just, I think that kills a lot of, you know, exciting things that maybe I would do that I don't take chances on, you know? Well, maybe that's not exactly true, but I guess like, I feel like I would maybe experiment a bit more with my art or at least take some time off to, to study a little more. I'm like obsessed about like studying art and stuff like that. And I do it, I do it today, but I guess I would do it in the less guilt-free capacity. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The same with like self-care. I would be less guilty about taking care of myself, which is really sad, but I wouldn't feel bad about taking time off to watch a movie or, hey, today I'm not going to write. I'm actually just going to go into a cafe and people watch or something, you know, and I wouldn't feel guilty yeah. about that. So <laughs> anyway, long segue to, to Lauren. I, I'm curious your answer to this question. Oh man, I would probably make some real weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many stories to tell, so many stories to tell, and I have no time to tell them. But also what I realized too is that I've been spending so much time of my life hustling, trying to make money yeah. that the heck was that? Sorry, I don't know if y'all heard that with the mm -hmm. firework. Oh. Um but uh yeah, like I I spent so much time hustling that I really had lost sight of again that self-care aspect of just slowing down and taking time to appreciate things in my life, taking time to appreciate people and my family, spending time with my nieces and nephews who I want to really pour into because like so many of them are into art or just into different things. Um, you know, like spending, like just like giving them that knowledge and just like sitting with them and learning from them because they have so much to give. I, that's really special. And it's something that I wish that I had more time to do but um, because I don't live near home and because I'm always busy, I don't really get a chance to do that as much. And I would definitely do that a lot more is just spend time with family um, and friends as well. Maybe actually like, you know, <laughs> focus on dating for once. And, but um, you know, I, I also, I've just always wanted to make art books and, um, and silent visual narratives. Um, there was, I don't know if I talked about this in a, any other podcast, but um, Hiroki Mafuyu had done this comic, um, this Japanese uh, manga artist, um, like, and I saw this in seventh grade and it inspired me like all the, like still now, like I just, I loved it so much. There were no words, really simple story, but I just loved how it communicated. And that's what I wrote my, um, my senior thesis about in college. And, uh, and I also wrote it about, I wrote about it in, in grad school as well. So it was just like a thread in my life. And I never really got a chance to do that myself. Um, I made a short comic about it, but I just want, I want to make, I just want to make a ton of art books that are just that kind of concept, the silent narratives, you know, Sean Tan also did a bunch of them as well, which I just love so much. 
Um, you know, The Arrival is just one of my one of my favorite books. Um, but yeah, I just I want to do stuff like that. I want to make weird stories that are surreal and whimsical and fantastical, and you know, they may not have like a super like uh, you know cohesive threads, but just things that make me happy. That's really what I want to do. So I want to start trying to do that once my my plate is clear of freelance because again I'm not taking any more after this. I'm holding my I'm saying this because I'm holding myself to it. So please hold me to it if I, if you hear me saying oh no there's freelance just tell me like Lauren you can't you told yourself you're not doing this. But um, that's what I think that's what I want to do. Um, and the illustrations that I'm doing now are also along the lines of the things that I would do. Um, you know just no holds barred. So yeah that's. In a nutshell, that's what that's what I want. <laughs> I want to get it there. That's really cool. Well, I think this is a good place to to wrap up. Honestly, yeah, it's been amazing, kind of taking a trip down memory lane and seeing where everyone semi started and kind of got to today. And I don't know, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think it's it's really amazing to that see fun. an artist path and stuff like that. But um, but yeah. Thank you all so much for listening and we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye. Bye y'all.